What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into today's episode of Days. Um, <laughs> first off, honestly, I cannot blame Gabby at all for being upset. I mean, she spent all that time in prison for a murder she did not commit. Now that she gets out, her daughter hates her. Because her daughter thinks that she just went away all that time and didn't care about her. Um, you know, I understand Abigail wants to take responsibility for everything and I respect it. Because she could have easily, you know, came up with excuses and blamed her alters. But she wanted to take responsibility for it. But I still don't blame Gabby for being pissed. I would be too. Gabby is definitely about to be a force to be reckoned with. She really is like she's going to that dark side. Honestly, I'm happy to see it because it brings more, you know, interest. It puts more interest into her character, to be honest. Um, I'm a Gabby fan, though. I like Gabby. And, you know, I I don't know what her angle is yet with Abigail because she was real pissed off at Abigail. But then when she found out Abigail might be pregnant, she snapped back into that best friend mode, giving her advice, you know, trying to help her through it. But I don't know if that was for real or was that an act? Because I really couldn't tell. Like, if she was genuinely concerned for Abigail or was this all some type of ploy? Because I have a feeling she's going to want revenge on everybody who wronged her. Um, I don't blame Abigail for wanting to go after Stefan. You know, she's just keeping her enemy close. And that's the reason she took the job at Gabby Chic at Demira Enterprises. She wanted her company back. Plus, it puts her in a better position to take his ass down. I know I've read on so many message boards that some people think Gabby's going to fail and she's not going to be able to take Stefan down. You cannot underestimate anybody. You can't. You, you can't underestimate your opponent. That's one thing you can do. And, um, hopefully people learn that. Like, you just cannot underestimate people. Gabby, she's about to be a problem. <laughs> like, most definitely. Um, Stefan was his usual smug self today when he was talking to Chad. He was so, like, condescending and just an arrogant, cocky bastard. And, you know, Chad pretty much kept his cool. You know, I feel like Chad needs to stop threatening him. And the reason I say that is because Chad, this is not the first time tra Chad has threatened Stefan. At this point, you need to let your actions be the threat. You know what I'm saying? Show him that you're going to take everything away from him. Instead of constantly warning him and threatening him, just do what you got to do. You know what I mean? That's what Chad needs to do at this point. Because this isn't the first or second time he has threatened or warned Stefan. This man has had too many warnings. Now it's time to put the plan into motion. I'm just saying. Um, Stefan was definitely trying to go Chad. He was trying to go Chad into hitting him so he could have him arrested. That way, Victor would have no choice but to fire Chad now as CEO of Titan. Any way he could to take Chad down, he was trying to do it. He kept bringing up Abigail, just really trying to get under Chad's skin. And I'm glad that Chad kept his composure. Um, but see, this this is what, you know, brings me to what I said a minute ago. You cannot underestimate your opponent. Stefan is underestimating Chad. He constantly underestimates Chad. And that's a foolish thing to do. Like, I do agree with Chad, though. Chad has been around Stefano. He has been around EJ. He has been around Andre. You can't be around these people for some years and not pick up on something and not learn nothing. You know what I mean? He's been around Stefano from, what, 2009 to 2016, 2009, 2010 to 2016. You can't be around a person like Stefano for that long and not learn nothing. It's impossible. And he was around EJ, too. And most recently, Andre. Come on, he picked up on some shit. And I remember when Chad used to play chess with Stefano and stuff like that. The only way for Chad to beat Stefan 
is you have to channel your inner Stefano. He has to outsmart him. That's the only way you're going to beat this man. You have to channel your inner EJ, your inner Andre, your inner Stefano. You have to channel those things in order to beat this man. That's the only way you're going to get the job done. And I so hope that he wipes that smug look off of Stefan's face. Like, I really hope he does. But Chad is at a point right now where he's about to get hit with a blow. Because Abigail could be pregnant and the baby might be Stefan's. That's going to put a little, you know, little uh, hitch in his plans maybe. I feel like, you know, I don't know how Chad is going to react to the news. I mean, how much more can one person take? He had to deal with the fact that his wife slept with Stefan, even though it was an altar that did it. But still, how much can one person take? I mean, this is going to be a death blow to their marriage. Um, hopefully, he can look past it, maybe, and try and get over it. But I doubt he will. Um, I think it might fuel his anger even more to take Stefan down if he finds out that she's pregnant with Stefan's baby. It might just give Chad that extra boost to take his ass down. That's what it might do for Chad because he needs something because that's the only way you're going to take Stefan down because Stefan is smart, but Chad, you know, he has the upper hand at this point because Stefan is underestimating Chad. You know, he's looking down at Chad thinking, oh, Chad doesn't have the balls to take me down. Chad has to prove his ass wrong. You know what I mean? That's what you have to do. Um, furthermore, this whole situation with Trip and Claire and Sierra, it's a hot ass mess. I'm going to be honest. Um, Trip was getting on my nerves when he was on the phone with Sierra, when Sierra had called him. Trip was annoying me. And the reason Trip was annoying me was because he said, oh, had he would have known about Chase raping Sierra. He wouldn't have pressured. He would have waited. You know, he thought that she was rejecting him. It was stupid to me because I feel like obviously she's not rejecting you. If y'all went out on dates and she was feeling you, obviously she wasn't rejecting you. Clearly, you could tell she wasn't ready to be intimate. He should have picked up on that. That's not a rejection. It's just obvious that she's not ready to be intimate with anybody. He should have waited regardless whether you knew about her situation or not. You still should have waited. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you that pressed for sex? Like, really? You should have just waited. So I have no sympathy for him or Claire, to be quite honest. Claire needs to come to the realization. I know that she wants a better relationship with Sierra, but she needs to come to the realization that her and Sierra might never be co close again. You know, they might not ever be like that. They might just be frenemies the rest of their life or enemies or whatever. She needs to just come to that thought process that, you know, we may never be cool again because it's always going to be an issue between them. Um, like Claire said, it's always like competition between her and Sierra and she wished that it wasn't like that. But, you know, sometimes it just is what it is. It's never going to be right. I ain't going to say never because, you you know, we never know what could happen in the future, but I'm just saying like it's always going to be an issue between them. Um, Sierra and Ben, I, I, I'm going to be real with you. They do kind of look good together, but I can't get behind her being with no serial killer. <laughs> Ex-serial killer, current serial killer. I no. I want to know what is Ron Carlovati going to do about Ben. That's what I want to know. Like, is he going to try to Franco him or something? You know how they did on GH with Franco, the whole brain tumor situation. So what is Ben's excuse going to be? I don't know because he's on contracts. So I don't know how you think you could keep a serial killer on this show ex-serial killer, whatever you want to call him. But I do like how Ben, you know, is there for Sierra. You know what I'm saying? Like, he now understands why she wants to get away, why she doesn't want to go back to Salem. You know, he's he's understanding it now. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's getting a better understanding of it. I still think the whole shit is creepy. I mean, I feel like he still should have took her to a hospital or something, but I digress. Rafe I still can't stand Rafe. I don't know what it is about the Rafe character, but I just don't like Rafe. I really just don't. You know, I can understand Hope wanting to know where her daughter is and stuff like that, but she's not going to be happy when she gets that answer. 
when she find out about Ben taking Sierra and nursing her back to health, Hope is going to hit the fucking ceiling. That's all I know. Hope is going to be ready to take out that gun and shoot him. She's definitely going to shoot him like she shot Stefan up. Like, Hope is not one to be played with. I'm going to tell you that right now, especially when it comes down to her daughter. Like, her kids, Hope don't play that shit. And she already got it out for Ben. And honestly, I can't blame Hope. I mean, dude did kill some people. So it's like, I would be scared too for my kid. You know, my kid being alone with a serial killer. Yeah, that's going to be a, a, a trigger for me too. Um, but anyway, this was a pretty, uh, pretty good episode today. Um, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about today's episode. And I will see y'all all later. Have a great day. Peace.